This is an HP 412A VTVM. This was built in the late 50s. The earliest mention of this that I could find was in the 1959 HP Journal in the summer of uh, 1959. This is quite an instrument. It'll measure from one millivolt to a thousand volts and the voltage range. It'll measure one milliamp to one amp in the current range, milliamp range. It'll also measure ohms, measure resistance. It's got resistance times one up to resistance times 100 mega ohms. Another thing nice about this instrument is the inputs are isolated from the chassis of the instrument which is really nice. It eliminates ground loops and um, is a lot more functional than, than the meters that have the case actually connected to ground. And this does have a three three wire line cord coming in so the case is grounded to the line. The meter has a extremely high input impedance on it. It can be up to 200 mega ohms in the 0.3 to 1000 range and 10 mega ohms in the 0 0.001 to the 0 0.1 range. So it's quite sensitive, very little loading on it. And when measuring current, this instrument will only introduce 0.1 ohms on the 10 milliamp to the 1000 milliamp, which is here. So 0.1 ohms is a pretty low resistance. It has a quite low burden voltage for an ammeter of its time, a milliammeter of its time. This is a selector for volts, milliamps, or ohms. It has a polarity reversing switch here, so you can, uh, on the volts and the milliamp range, you can reverse the direction of the meter. It doesn't work on the ohms range. Another thing this meter has is on the output, DC amplifier output. Th these terminals here can feed an output device such as a chart recorder and it will provide up to one volt out at full scale and it'll drive up to one milliamp. So that could be useful if you want to drive some type of a recorder or a data logger of some type. This unit is uh, tag not working so I don't know what's wrong with it. I picked this up used. This probe here is not the original HP probe. Uh, says it's got a one mega ohm input which is okay but this is different and I'm not sure about these leads. This one is RG58 50 ohm cable. I'm not sure what this one is. But these cables, the grounds are continued through the cables up to the tip here, which, you know, it's like a four wire measurement here. Um, your grounds are complete all the way up to the end of the cable. I'll find out when I open it up what was done here. I found two manuals for this one is for prefix 004, and one is for prefix 134. The, one, the 004 manual had a 1960 date on it, and the 134 prefix had a 1961 date. So I'm not sure which one applies to this one. The next step is um, we'll open the case and see what we find inside. Hopefully no uh, bad surprises. I haven't had this thing powered up, so I'm not sure what I'll get. That's the next step. Stand by. Well, I plugged the unit in, so let's see if we get uh, smoke. Well, we don't have a pilot light. Needle moved. And... Yeah, boy, the needle's going crazy here. Let's see what the... Oh, we got a bulb out here.
I have to be careful because sometimes oh there we go that bulb wasn't making good contact oh could that be all that's wrong with it I doubt it that's still on This would take a while to warm up. I imagine it's going to drift around a little bit. Let's see if we can measure some voltage on this thing here. Uh, here's something handy to have. I took a, a big gel cell battery and I mounted it on a panel. And that will be our voltage source. And let's put it on... 30 volt range this is measuring about 11 volts on this uh, power supply well, that's not too bad I'm on the 30 volt range, 30, 20, 10. Um, I'm going to use my voltage standard. Now that I know that it works, I'll put it on uh, 10 volts to start with. Oh my gosh, that's right on. Try the 10 volt range. That's 10 volts. Okay, I'm going to try... Here's 2.5 volts on the 3 volt range. That's 2.5 volts. I'll be darned. Looks like all that was wrong with this thing is a bad contact on one of those lamps. Um, 5 volts. 5 volts. 7.5 volts, 7.5 volts. This thing's working. Um, I still would like to try replacing those incandescent lamps with LEDs. I think that would be a nice experiment. So, even though it works, um, let's look at this. Yeah, it looks like whoever had this before, they just wired a bulb. can see here you can see the back of these where the light is feeding through and the back of the demodulator here I'll have to look at the schematic I guess my idea is 6.3 volts on each of these terminals if I could take a white LED and make a module that would replace these it would have a built-in current limiting resistor and I could plug it in in place of these lamps in fact if I use a wire that's big enough to go in these sockets and I can always convert it back to incandescent if I want I don't know how available these lights are anymore these lamps because obviously who had this couldn't get an extra lamp um, I can't believe they didn't test this thing. Well, you can see this is not making a good contact. It's dimming a little bit. Up oh, there it goes out. Yeah, when that lamp goes out, the meter goes nuts. As you can see. <laughs> and there we go. Back stable. That's all that was wrong with it. Uh, I am going to try and experiment replacing those lamps. That will be the next step. Before I convert this unit to um, operate on LEDs, 
and I've removed the lamp, the lower lamp here and the modulator chopper assembly. I have an LED, a white LED running about 15 milliamps in it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to power up the device and we'll see if we get the oscillation, which we will, we'll see if the LED will stop it. So I turn on the power and as the tubes warm up we should see the meter start to oscillate which it is. Now I'm going to put the LED into the opening where the lamp was. And I've got about 11 volts going into the DC input. You can see here, apply 11 volts. And we're getting 11 volts. So it looks like the conversion to LEDs will work. There you can see it's oscillating. And I put the LED in and it stopped. What I'll do is I'll try to make a module that I can plug in to replace these lamps with white LEDs. So there'll be a dropping resistor and an LED, a white LED. But I want it so I can convert back to incandescent if I want to. So I'll pull the bulbs out and I'll have it so I can plug the LED assemblies into these lamp housings here. And it should work. I don't know why it won't. There again, it's on the uh, 10 volt range. And I'm applying about 11, a little over 11 volts. And that's what I'm getting, so... Now I'm going to pull the LED out again, and there the thing's going crazy. Now I'll put the LED back in, and it stabilizes. So I think my theory is going to work. So the next step is we'll fabricate the LED replacements, we'll install them, and we'll see what we get. That's the next step. Here's a completed modification to the Hewlett Packard. 412A VTVM. What I did was I took out the four incandescent bulbs which may be getting hard to find and I replaced them with four white LEDs. They're driven off of one of the sockets of one of the incandescent bulbs. I tapped off a 6.3 volts, went through a half wave rectifier, I filtered it went through four 330 ohm dropping resistors and they feed the four LEDs. What I need to do next, I'm going to put a dab of silicon to hold the LEDs in the barrels that uh, shine into the modulator demodulator assembly and that should complete the modification. I didn't put any insulation over the end of the LEDs because once I put a dab of silicone, they're not going to go anywhere. And I want to be able to remove this mod in the future. For instance, if uh, someone else got this unit and wanted it to be back to factory original, they may not want to use the LEDs. I personally wanted the LEDs because I'm, I'm going to use it not as a museum piece, but as a working piece of equipment. So to unmodify it, all you'd have to do is pull out the LEDs, unsolder these two leads, and you can plug in your incandescence and you're back to the normal factory. So I'm going to turn it on now and you can see the four LEDs lit. And the meter went through its normal, went to the right and then it settled back down. I've got it on the 30 ohm voltage range and I've set my voltage standard on the 10 volt range and now I'm going to apply 10 volts that's pretty close to 10 volts going up to the 10 volt range that's pretty close A little parallax now the thing's warming up so there's going to be a little bit of movement of the of the uh, needle 
but I found once I let the unit warm up for 10 minutes that goes away. So anyway if you have one of these units um, and you can't find bulbs or you want to replace them it's pretty easy just to modify it and use four white LEDs. Of course here's the chopper motor here this is a synchronous motor and as that disc rotates it chops the input signal in. Here's a brief description of the operation of the VTVM here. This is a diagram of the input assembly, the attenuator network, and the signal to be measured comes in through the probes here and then it goes through an attenuator assembly. This section is for the voltmeter, this is for the ohmmeter section, and this is for the milliamp section. So the input signal is processed so it can be fed into the amplifier assembly. If you look down here, A and B, this is where the attenuator network, and this is on a big drum uh, wafer switch assembly that you can pick the different, uh, different scales. But A and B are the two points where it's connected into the amplifier. And that's the next diagram here. Here's point A and B from the attenuator assembly and the signal goes through a filter and into the modulator and here's where the signal is chopped into a square wave and applied to the amplifier here and this is basically an AC coupled amplifier chain that amplifies the, that signal and the last stage here this is a pentode tube the signal from the plate is applied to the demodulator and of course the demodulator and the modulator are synchronized together so that this converts the signal back to DC at this point. From the demodulator, the signal is amplified in this cathode follower here. The output is tapped off the cathode and it is supplied to the terminal on the back which provides a DC voltage that can drive a chart recorder or some other device. Also at that point you've got uh, quite a bit of negative feedback to the input. I think it's about 50 dB of feed, negative feedback that stabilizes the amplifier. The output also is connected at point C here. This is the polarity inversion switch where you can reverse the polarity uh, for the volt and, and milliamp ranges here. And of course here's the meter gives you your output. That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.